I'd be home by nine Hell, I tell her that most of the time Whoa, whoa, baby, don't know on her too much Whoa, I'll tell her where, but I won't say why Oh, now, now I'm dancing, oh, I'm dancing I'm dancing with the devil Oh, now, now I'm dancing, oh, I'm dancing I'm dancing with the devil Hello, and welcome to Otter Creek in Rio Grande. This is the third installment of structure build 11 the cobbler the colorado shoe store and if you haven't seen the first two videos you're more than welcome to go check those out before i get started here uh, or you can just watch this one on its own eventually this will be a playlist on my channel so without anything else being said let's get started went ahead and built out the the little lean-to shed the uh, extension, which I'm calling the workshop because I think that's probably what it was. And I think what I'm going to do, you can see I've already put in the bracing for the backside. I think I'm going to go ahead and get this glued together. And what I want to do is get it put together so that I can figure out what the exact width is on this end and then transfer that measurement onto here because I'm going to cut out what I'm not going to use there and then that way I can go ahead and glue this onto here with an exposed section that these will glue right straight into. Now, I'm not sure if I went about this the right way or not, but uh, if you can see it, but I went ahead and went in and notched out just a little bit of this so that that will fit in there and I should have a nice that gluing surface that will then go into there and it should work out I don't know if I can show it here but the way that will interface I don't even know why I'm showing you I'm gonna do it and you'll get to see the end result when I'm done but that corner will end up looking something like that in the exposed section there. So I think that's the next step. And I'm just trying to decide if I should go ahead and stain this before I glue it together. I think that would be prudent, which means I should go ahead and distress all of this just a little bit too, uh, particularly on the sides it's gonna be seen. I don't know that I need to worry about this side at all because you will never see it so I think that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and do a little distressing and then get it stained
gonna go ahead and stain my trim. And I'm gonna stain with uh, Ty Brown, which is his hunter line. And I really don't know how much of this I'm actually gonna need. So what I'm gonna do is put it in there, wipe it off, and that that I've stained is longer than I believe any one piece of uh, material will need to be. And I will just make, I don't know, probably this whole stick worth. This is my favorite part of doing any of this because you never really know what it's gonna look like. You have an idea, you know, what it's gonna look like, but you don't really know until you do it. And that's the fun part, in my opinion. And I haven't decided <laughs> if I'm going to paint anything other than the front of the building. Let me make sure that yeah, that's gonna be long enough. Let's see, you got four sides, one, two, three, four, and then another two. I think this will be enough right here for what I'm gonna do. Let this sit a little bit longer have one that's a little darker than the others. Always put the lid back on. Now, I think I wanna go ahead and glue together this for instructional integrity before I stain. I don't think it's gonna cause many problems as long as I'm careful with my glue. Uh, these should come in and fit in right there like that. So I think I'll do that. This is some wood glue and get to where I can see here. And try and put this on fairly accurately. I don't want too much squeeze out into the plywood there. Make sure I've got the right piece, I do. I did everything I could up to this point to make everything square. And my one, two, three blocks may or may not work decently well here because I had to put the door in first because, I don't know if you noticed, but there's just a little sliver, you know, like, I don't know, a scale six inches of, of wood there that uh, I knew I was gonna break if I didn't go ahead and install the door. So now I can just find another one, two, three block. That should work. I'm gonna let that dry for a few minutes. All right, we're gonna speed the video up a little bit here and do some voiceover. What I'm doing now is just going in and cutting off the excess trim so that uh, it's at the same angle of the building. And now you just go in with a sanding stick and make sure everything's nice and smooth and flush and at the same angles. Now it's kind of hard to see here, 
but I've gone in and cut away a portion of that scribed beadboard so that the trim fits down inside there. That way there's no protrusions, you know, no air gap between the trim and the building. I've probably mentioned before, I like to use paint brushes to put in glue in all of the places where you, you need to be very accurate with it. And then you do the same thing here. Just go in and cut away the excess at the angle it needs to be. Now I've gone in and measured and cut out where the shed is gonna go, the workshop, if you will. And I'm just marking it so that I know exactly where I wanna put the glue to glue on the siding. Now, as I, as I film this right now, you know, I'm doing the voiceover. I can't remember exactly what all I've said to this point, but uh, the siding material that I'm gonna glue on to the side here it overhangs just a little bit on each side and that's so I can sand it back at a later time and even if the corners and the walls on, on this block is not a hundred percent square it uh, it will work because I've kind of made the scribe siding uh, tailor fit to the actual block of wood itself And now we're gonna do the, the part of the build that is always the funnest, and that's staining the wood. So this is Builders and Square Deadwood, and if you've watched a previous build that I did, you'll know that I, I like to kind of do this differently than most people. I, instead of saturating everything with one color, I like to kind of go in and use different colors so that I get a varied effect of the wood grain. This is also Builders and Square. This is called Silver Wood. And it kind of has a silver gray look to it. It doesn't get very dark at all. And I'm trying to leave some of the wood exposed, some stained. And then this should be Cordovan Brown, which is Hunterline. And the overall look of the building will be, you know, the Hunterline Brown. But the silver wood and the dead wood will give it a little bit of variety in different places. And I've also started on the back side of the building here, just, you know, to kind of work on my technique, make sure it's looking the way I want it to before I move to any side that will be seen. I think on the back side here, I decided not to use any dead wood just to kind of see what it would look like. And I'm making no attempt to clean the brush in between dips. I think I decided that the, the dead wood looked pretty yellow, but I'm also not finished with it.
Now this is Ty Brown. And it's the darkest of the stain that I have that I'll use. And I like to be pretty surgical with it. I think I'm going back over the yellow with it to kind of help darken that yellow up a little bit. And I'm also looking for all of the distress points that I created with uh, my blade and my dental tools. And I'm just kind of, you know, picking the areas that would be the darkest with that uh, particular stain and making sure I get them you can see the distress points kind of showing themselves in the stain. Now when I use the, the Thai Brown, the areas that I want to be the darkest is where I'll flood in quite a little bit. And then after that, I'm just using the very corner of the brush to kind of seep it into all of the areas that are, that I want to be darker, like the knot holes and that kind of thing. And now that the brush is actually kind of dry, I'll go in and kind of force it into a few places. And kind of after you get all the colors on there, I found that you can pretty much put layer after layer of that silver wood on there and it kind of homogenizes everything. Now here, I'm just going back and making sure that the, the scribe siding wood is perfectly flush with the side of the building which is one of the reasons why I like using the block of wood. This is Apple Barrel's pavement, which is just dark enough to do what you want it to do, but not so dark that it looks unnatural. I should be able to put on the walls now, the two side walls. Got that nice and blacked out and I've got this set up to where it fits right in there just snug and I think that's going to work I just need to decide what color should my windows be so there's kind of an artistic decision to be made and I can only use this so much because for one, it's in black and white and what I've got on the actual building, my building, you know, I have already kind of established a white mullion in the window. So 
do I make these windows white? I've got them primed kind of a tacky, a khaki brown, but my plan is to make this white. I don't like the idea of white trim on white paint, so I'm gonna have to do some thinking. Got the windows. Went ahead and decided to paint the mullions white. And eventually, once I get this glued on and, and the wood stained up the way I want, I'll probably go in and wash a little bit of brown paint into them just to dirty up the corners a little bit and whatnot. I went with a nice curtain up here in, in the master bedroom, I don't know. And then just kind of plain Jane uh, shades on the two bottom stories. And then I've gone with a blue, a dark blue shade for the top. And that's because, you know, the bottom corner of this right here will be seen unless I paint it black. And I didn't really want to mess with that. So that was a, a good way to solve that problem. Now I went with a darker blue uh, because I think it will pop out on the white wall, I guess. I don't know, is what it is. So now I think the only other thing I need to do is get the sides glued on. Uh, I also have this chimney. I need to do just a little more sanding in there to get it to where it's nice and straight because it's a little crooked at the moment. But I'm just about ready to start making it look like a building. All right, now we're gonna put the sides on. And of course this is Tight Bond 2, I believe, wood glue. I think this is the water resistant type of the Tight Bond. I don't think it really matters. I'm trying not to get any glue on top of what's already on there, the scribe siding on the back of the building. I'm trying not to get any glue on there if I can keep from it. I think I did get a little on the top there because I wasn't watching what I was doing. If you can get the stain to seep into the sides of that wood, it, uh, it makes for a real nice effect. I don't know how realistic it is, but uh, it does look good when the stain seeps in from, from the side. All right, so this is the backside of the building. And what I did is I went in and made a template out of paper with the top of the building so that I would have the right angle to cut these boards at. And I just cut a bunch of them at the correct angle so that when they met the, the peak of the roof, I would have the right angle there. And I also left a little bit of a gap there. It's kind of, you can't see it here, and I, I think I'll show it later on to where the roofing material should be able to slide underneath. There was a little bit of a bend in there. Just kind of test fitting things now, making sure that it's gonna jive the way I want it to. And we've got more staining. We'll just enjoy some music here since I've already talked through the process. I know a lot of you guys love my music.
I think the key with the dead wood is don't let the pure dead wood color show through. You do want to stain over the top of it and then it'll act like a, a good filter. I think I had some stuff in my brush that shouldn't have been there, but it, uh, it didn't cause any problems. It just looks kind of nasty watching it here. I think it's uh, the sanding material from when I sanded the, the edges back. Now I'm going in with the tie brown and hitting the corners. You can see it seep in from the side. which is the reason why I didn't want to get any glue because the glue will prevent your stain from staining, seeping into the wood. Okay, so I've painted the clapboard and this is another one of those things that in order for me to do what I'm doing here, I have to be right over top of the work. And so therefore, you know, I just can't film it. There's, there's really no effective way for me to film what I'm doing. But the way I like to do it is, is use as thin a flat bristled brush as you can, and then go up into the clapboard as far as you can. And then the areas that you leave without paint are on the end of the clapboard instead of on the inside of the clapboard where they would be, you know, if you, if you sponged it on with a sponge or something like that. The, the sponge actually works counterproductive the way real weathering in, in real life would. So that's the reason why I do it that way. Now this is silver wood, and I just went with pure silver wood. I didn't try to do anything fancy. And this will knock back the white to kind of a dull gray color. And then the wood will kind of get a nice gray stain as well. I guess I should mention that uh, the color of white that I used is uh, Folk Arts Vintage White. I think this is a real nice off-white color for an older building look. I'm using silver wood here and I think I decided later on what I really needed was the tie brown because the tie brown matched the trim. Uh, this is Cordovan brown. I think the end result you'll see at the end of the video, all of this probably ended up a little darker than what I would have liked for it to have been, but uh, it, I think it still turned out pretty good. If you look close there, you can see the gap that exists uh, for the, the roofing material, the cardstock that's gonna come in to be the roof. The windows are in, and I'll point out one thing that uh, I should have done before I did any of my painting and staining, 
and that's cut a small relief to where the window can recess in in a way that you have little or no air gap between the frame of the window and the wall. That way you don't have an unsightly gap that wouldn't actually be there. So now I'm on to the roof, roofs. So I'm gonna use cardstock for that. And I know the video's getting long, so I'm probably gonna kind of skip to the end when it comes to the roofing. Here is the roof for the workshop. And if you can, if I can get it to focus. The chimney, I used about three different colors of rust. And after I got the bricks painted, I went in with uh, Abtilon dust. I went full strength with it. Just uh, daubed it on there and then wiped it off. And I think that is a really nice way to do mortar and bricks, especially if it's a, if it's a small item. Learned that from Boomer. Thank you, Boomer. And of course the, the tar paper roof is uh, something that uh, Jason Jensen does a lot. So thank you, Jason. And I think it turned out pretty good. So here's a look at the back side of the false front where I've left the little gap for the card stock. That's so the, the roofing material can slide just underneath the wood there. And then I also left a spot here with the shingles where that will uh, interface the way I wanted it to. And here are my efforts with the roof on the building. I can't remember if the last segment I had the windows in or not, but I also went in and framed out this area and I redarkened some of the wood. And all in all, I'm fairly happy with the way it turned out. And the brick here, what I did, instead of trying to create any flashing, which I just was kind of indecisive, I decided to go with glue mixed in with this uh, pavement paint by Apple Barrel and just a little bit of weathering. Now, the next step is the advertisement. And what I've done is I've taken this, which is Banjo Tobacco, uh, David Dunlop, and this would be period accurate because I can't find the correct advertisement. Uh, did a lot of research on tobacco and just couldn't find what I wanted. And I really liked this gold color, the way that gold color works on the building. I just, I really like the way that gold color looks. So I think that's what I'm gonna ride with. I, I, I do have one other option and that is the Bull Durham, which there are reasons why I would like it as well, except to me, it's just so dadgum bright as compared to the banjo. So I'm gonna go with the banjo. And what I've done, is I've printed it on tracing paper. And if I remember right, I learned this from Ralph Renzetti. And I'm not sure if this ink will possibly bleed. 
So I'm gonna seal both sides of this with some dull coat and hopefully that will keep anything from sealing. And then this should be thin enough that it will lay on there and I'll be able to see the texture of the wood. So getting the sign put on the building didn't really go the way I had hoped it would. Kind of the first thing that I noticed working with the tracing paper is that it grew. It grew by, I don't know, probably a couple of three millimeters. And I was lucky that I did make the sign smaller than I originally planned, because if I'd have, if I'd have kept it the size that I initially thought it needed to be, uh, I, I don't know, maybe it would have ended up working better because I would have done something different. But uh, it just, it really didn't lay on there like I thought it was going to. And after it was all said and done, a lot of the ink ended up coming off, which depending on how you look at it, the whole, the whole purpose of this sign in my mind's eye was to make something that was really old and predated the time frame that the locomotives are running in the town. So I, I did accomplish that, but all in all, I would have liked the sign to be just a little bit more legible, uh, a little more vibrant in the colors. And, you know, it's a technique that I'm gonna have to continue to work on to get it to work the way I, I think it ought to. So I will leave you guys with some still pictures of the finished product and point out a few things that, that I would like to have done better and hopefully will improve on moving forward. The first thing is the architecture at the top of the false front and what's going just across the top of the storefront. Those should have gone out flush with the trim on the sides of the building. I, I just didn't account for the width of the trim added to the width of the building and just, just an oversight on my part. I, I think looking at almost all of the structures with that kind of architecture, they do go all the way out to the trim of the building. So that's something uh, I will remember to do in the future. Another thing that just is really not very good is the trim on the roof itself. And you know, what I need to do is, is either make uh, rafter tails for the building or one or two rafter tails that I can glue the, the trim flush to so that it, it's hanging properly on the side of the building. Now I was able to glue the side that's gonna be showing to the, the layout, the one that you're gonna see the most, the side with the sign. Uh, I was able to get it on there to where it hangs uh, closer to what, how it should be. And then on the side that's not gonna be seen as well, I, I really didn't make any attempt. Another thing that I'm not particularly happy with at the moment that I can go back and fix and plan on is the interface of the chimney on the roof. I should have done something different, but I was getting towards the end of the build and you know you know how it goes. Uh, you, you, you see the, the light at the end of the tunnel and you kind of rush things and I didn't put as much effort into that as I probably should have, uh, but it's, it's still, there's something I can do there that should work. Now, as far as the concept goes of, you know, creating a, a storefront window shop uh, plugged into a solid wood block, I think I've proven that that's gonna work. One of the things that I think I can do a little bit better is getting the storefront flush with the material that I'm using as the, the front of the building so that there's not a deep recess by a 32nd of an inch or whatever. That's another, another concept that I'm gonna try and work on for the next structure is getting, getting the look that I want 
and trying to make it look a little more natural because I think this is maybe set back a little bit too deep than what it probably should have been. But all in all, I'm happy with the way the structure turned out. Uh, again, when you look at any one model, a, a person tends to pick out all of the things that they weren't happy with, uh, how you can do better the next time, which is healthy because we always want to improve our modeling skills. And the other part of that is, is once this building gets put into the town with the 20 or other buildings that are gonna be in the area, the overall look is going to work well and none of the small imperfections should stick out bad enough to bother me. So uh, thanks for watching this uh, structure build series and hopefully uh, one of the next videos will be a, a, a layout update. So thanks for watching and we'll see you around. Oh, pour me for more so I can sleep